Uh, pleasure to be here today live for removing the friction from the inbox experience with AMP for email. My name is Nick Einstein. I'm Vice President of Product Marketing for NetCore and delighted to be joined today by Matt Harris, uh, co-founder, CEO of Dispatch. Matt, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Nick. Glad to be here. I was going to say that's a, a great video. I hadn't seen that one yet. It's awesome. Uh, thank you. We are, uh, like you, very enthusiastic about the prospects of, of uh, interactive email powered by AMP for Email. And uh, before we dig in here, Matt, maybe tell us a little bit about uh, Dispatch uh, and, and, yeah, and, and yeah, yourself. Thanks. Yeah, for, for sure. Um, so I'm, uh, I come from the dark side. I'm a former developer um, who unfortunately had to work on a lot of email um, and started Dispatch to solve a lot of the problems I saw in the email industry and in building email in particular. Um, so kind of my background from developer to uh, tech entrepreneur and, and founder. Um, Dispatch today, uh, we help folks uh, build the best email they can uh, very, very quickly. Um, so we do uh, what we call email production, the modular design system. And we're betting really big on AMP. We are um, an AMP email builder, uh, as well as um, a kind of AMP email like data connector. Um, so we help some of the biggest brands in the world um, create rich email experiences and then connect those to uh, to data to do interesting things. Um, and uh, yeah, stoked to be here today and talk about this and how Love we it. work with uh, Netcor. Love it. Thank you and, and uh, delighted to have you here. Uh, today, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, what AMP for email is, give, give everyone kind of a, a rundown on, on kind of what AMP for email is, what's required uh, to, to begin to send uh, interactive emails uh, powered by AMP, uh, the, the kind of so what, why you should begin doing that and, and why it matters, why, why we think uh, uh, AMP for email really is, can be transform, transformative uh, for your business dig into some use cases, uh, and then we'll hit on just uh, pragmatically how to potentially get started, uh, whether it's with Dispatch, with Netcore, or, or with your current provider. Uh, we will leave plenty of time today for uh, Q&A, so please do submit those questions in the uh, uh, Zoom webinar panel itself. And if, we, uh, if you have questions after the webinar, feel free to hit us up on email directly um, Matt's email in there, uh, mine too, as well as our LinkedIn uh, uh, profiles. We'd love for you to follow us on LinkedIn um, as well. To kick us off, we are going to have a couple polls today. Uh, one of the first ones hitting us right now, I believe. How familiar are you with AMP for email? Just to set the stage, uh, and, and it's an interesting one. Uh, it, Matt's an evangelist, as, as am I. We've both been talking about it for a little while. And uh, a lot of people, um, uh, at least in my conversations, Matt, are, are hearing about it for the first time when we're talking about it. Yeah, I, I'm, still, um, I'm still surprised sometimes when I hear people are hearing about it for the first time. But um, I mean, it's, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of marketers out there. And so, um, you know, we got to spread the word about uh, how amazing AMP is. But um, I'm always curious on, on, on webinars just to understand the audience and, and where yep. everyone's at. Um, so yep. yeah, I think super it's, interesting to see the results of this poll. Yep. Yep. And, and we we have them pretty much about half of the audience has no idea and hasn't heard of AMP and, and you guys are about to get, uh, yeah, your mind blown a little bit. I hope, uh, 38% haven't used it, uh, uh, are familiar with it. And, and we see that in the marketplace a lot, you know, um, as we're talking about it and evangelizing, a lot of people kind of are, are hearing about it, but, but very few, at least in the North American market right now, are are, uh, are actually using it. 13% here are planning a project or want to, to do something with AMP, which, uh, yeah, I find very encouraging. Love it. That's awesome. That's super interesting. Yep. Good stuff. Thank you for that. Um, and nobody yet sending AMP, but, but yeah, let's, let's, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, thank you for that. So, so maybe to set the stage a little bit, uh, let's talk about kind of, you know, where email has been and, and where we're going, where kind of AMP fits into the picture. And, and uh, Ray Tomlinson hit send for the first time in, in 1971, sending an email to himself uh, by 78, 
we as email marketers have begun to, to uh, batch and blast messages out. Um, but but email marketing really rose in the late 90s when when HTML was introduced, which was a pretty big shift, you know, going from, uh, you know, basic text to HTML uh, with that, obviously, open pixel too. And so we, so we can uh, uh, hit on that, uh, you know, get get signals around the open behavioral email begins to be sent. We're, we're measuring response um, and, and beginning to, to ad adapt to that. In the uh, late 2000s, we get uh, responsive emails. A lot of people opening, obviously, on, on mobile uh, across the world. Uh, Netcore serving big audience in Asia uh, as well. Mobile's the, the, the primary method. Um, but, but in the 2000s, we begin to segment. Uh, we begin to leverage machine learning, segment uh, uh, predictive audiences, uh, uh, lookalike models, uh, uh, that sort of stuff personalization based on AI, um, all of this kind of being a one-way, uh, you know, push towards consumers, uh, 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 broadcasting or narrow casting messaging. The future of email really, from my perspective, hit us in 2019 when uh, Gmail announced and implemented AMP for email, which, um, as we'll dig into a second, really kind of shifts the paradigm from a one-way channel of, of broadcasting messaging to really a truly interactive uh, uh, two-way channel uh, powering uh, uh, commerce within the inbox itself, powering product discovery, uh, um, driving really, really tremendous outcomes and uh, a transformative moment in the email innovation timeline from my perspective. Uh, you have a thought on the, on the timeline, where we've been, where we're going? Matt. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't want to date myself here. I, I, I know I look young, but I've been involved in email since uh, basically since HTML was kind of introduced a um, uh, little bit. Um, but what I what I see here is like since that's the introduction of HTML is like we've largely as as technologists in email been focused on kind of like the back end of sending. So, you know, better personalization, better segmentation, um, you know, better behavioral triggers and everything else. But we really haven't changed like what actually goes into the messages um, or like what, how you interact with it. So I see the future of email is like, hey, let's address like the front end of email um, and let's address like how we're actually interacting with it. And, um, and I think I think, it, I think it's really huge. It's, it's definitely it's definitely a game changer. I know the announcement here uh, from Gmail for Amp was in 2019. 2023 now so like what's changed between now and then i think that's an interesting question and we're going to talk about that oh yeah no for sure and so maybe to to kick us off here tell us a little bit what exactly is amp for email for, for those of us yeah. for the 50 percent here a big percentage of our audience here has never heard of it before let's bring them up to speed awesome yeah so i'll try not to be uh bore you with the technicals here but i think we got to talk, talk about that a little bit um so tech-wise, it is a whole new message format, um, which is shouldn't be too scary, but it's kind of scary. Um, so um, before AMP, we had plain text and HTML. And I know a lot of marketers already don't really think about their plain text a whole lot, but technically every email you're send, sending, you're sending plain text and HTML. And it's, it's important to make sure it's a good experience. AMP adds like a third message format to that. Um, and uh, it's kind of the benefit of that. It's, like, it's a whole new ball game, like, you know, whole new, whole new capabilities there. Um, so what is it um, from a technical standpoint? Well, you get HTML um, and CSS, which is you get that normal HTML, email, but you also get the ability to leverage um, like JavaScript. Um, so you can start actually doing dynamic things in the email itself. And the big PowerPoint of, um, of AMP for email in the slide here, it says APIs, but your AMP emails can actually communicate, can communicate with um, other websites and other servers on the internet and they can send data and they can load data back in. And that's where it gets really, really exciting because practically speaking, that's everything that a website can do. Um, and so it's kind of like you're embedding like a little app inside the inbox, um, which is amazing. Um, now, I, and that, this is like one of what, you know, from a technology standpoint, some I'm, con I'm concerned about, um, while it's like an app in my inbox, that seems kind of scary because I already get like phishing emails and other things. Like this is a technology from Google. And so they take security really, really strong. So there's incredibly strong controls with AMP for security and safety. Um, and Nick, I think you could back this up. Like AMP for emails literally used by some banks. 
Um, so like that's the level of security here that that we that is providing this technology. It's it's, it's like ready to go. Indeed. Um, the final Indeed. thing I'll say, yeah. The final, final thing I'll say is like, you know, and I mentioned like, hey, like AMP got released in 2019, it's 2023. What happened? Hey, this technology is awesome. It's like it fundamentally changed what we can do, but it's it's not easy. Um, and that's why um it's kind of like a slow roll of getting this technology mainstream. But man, is it worth it? Um we got some slides on that. I, Nick's got some case studies and um, the results here are like just wild. And so I'm, I'm super stoked to, to talk about that, but it's definitely worth it. Yeah, no, for, for sure. And I'll tell you, you know, it, it, for a while, it may not have been worth it because, you know, as, as you pointed out, Matt, like a lot of us, and we'll hit on the support actually right now, but a lot of the email community has supported AMP free email since 19, or, you know, for a while since it came out with a window to, to support the, that additional MIME type to send a message. But uh, my, I posit that until vendors like, like Dispatch and, and Netcore came along, it has been hard. You know, the, the juice for some has not been worth the squeeze because it took a lot to get started. Um, yeah, people, yeah, yeah, it's a lot easier now. Yeah, I think um, I think Pinterest had like, uh, the Google team worked with Pinterest for one of the first like test cases of AMP for email, um, and uh, under the behind the scenes, it took a, a team of like really smart engineers at Pinterest um, more than six months to develop one email, um, and that was like in partnership with Google, like getting like uh, you know um, back access to the to their team, and so like that's not most retailers can't do that. They don't have six months and a ton of Pinterest engineers, so. Um, Luckily, we're where we are now. What we're going to show you today is that you don't need that anymore. Uh, it can be like you know, click, click, boom, um, as we say. But uh, who supports AMP? Let's chat about this. Okay, so the mailbox providers, and this is this is kind of the, the big thing here. Um, this is the full list today: Gmail, Fair Email, Yahoo, AOL, and Mail.ru, and more are coming. These are the mailboxes. So um, on an iPhone in the Gmail app, um, you're supported with AMP for email. Um, basically, anywhere you're reading uh, and using Gmail in in a browser like Chrome on a phone, on a tablet, uh, wherever this works today. Um, and there are more mailbox providers um, coming. Um, this is not a dead technology. Google is still continuing to push and, par and partner with more mailbox providers. So I think that's pretty exciting. Um, on the other side is you have to actually send AMP for email. And, and like I, I said at the outset, AMP is a whole new message format, right? So it used to be plain text HTML. Now we've got AMP as a third. You need the capability to send it. Um, and so on the right is a list of email service providers that support this today. It's quite a lot. And there's like more coming constantly. Um, one thing I'll, I will highlight here is that like, not all of these email service providers are the same. Um, I'll call it Netcore as, as a, an amazing example. Netcore can help you build AMP emails and send them. Most people on this list can't help you build them. Um, they could just have the technical capability to send. And that's a really big different, uh, differentiator here. And, and like one of the reasons why uh, what companies like Netcore are doing is so exciting. Yep, totally. I, I, I thank you for that. And and uh, there, we do have an inline question: How does this play in inboxes outside Gmail? You pretty much answered it. And and the reality is, you know, uh, on on an Android phone, you're gonna you're gonna have an uh, AMP experience. On uh, the desktop, if you're if you're using a Gmail client or you're using the web client or Yahoo or any of these guys, you're gonna have the AMP experience. The the real blocker is is Apple Mail. You know, if if you're on an iPhone, you're using Apple Mail, you're you're going to not get it, but you will get the fallback experience, right, Matt? You 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 know, so so for those audiences who aren't going to be addressable via AMP, uh, it's it's a fallback. Yeah, and I think that's um that's another shout out to like in in the AMP world, like not all providers are the same. Um, platforms like Dispatch and Netcore, we're going to make sure that that fallback experience that you get on Apple Mail. Um, is still really great. Like, and maybe you're, you know, instead of being able to use the app in the email, you're going to link to a landing page where you can use the app. And we're going to make sure that's an awesome experience. And I'm going to make sure you're not going to have to do any work to have that happen. Um, but not all providers are going to be there to support you with that. And that's uh, something to look about and think about when you're evaluating AMP uh, options. Totally, totally. And, and uh, to get a little more, uh, yeah, again, not to get too technical, <laughs> but there is some technical, yeah, stuff to get into here. Matt, how about, how yeah, about, absolutely. I think this is our last slide with like really hardcore tech details. So um, uh, yeah, after this is going to be all all gravy. But um, 
let's talk just what are the requirements yeah i know um, a lot of people here don't know this yet so number one you do have to pass um, spf dcam and dmark um, and so these are all technologies to help validate that you are allowed to be sending email from your domain and in general for good like good email deliverability and being a good email sender you should do these in general like this shouldn't be hopefully you're doing this already and it's not a roadblock to an amp um and your email sending platform, um, whether it's um, Netcore or anyone else, they will help you do this as well and get and get set up with them. And um, it's kind of like, um, hey, just to be a good email sender, let's do this. Um, but the next requirement, you actually have to build uh, a full AMP email just to, in order to get um, validated to uh, send AMP emails, which might sound kind of counterintuitive. That's like actually a big part of this process because AMP for, uh, for email is so powerful, like, you know, Nick's going to show some amazing examples later, and we will as well. Um, uh, because it's so powerful, and you can do checkout in email, and you can do product search and everything else, um, you do have to get verified by Google in order to send these emails out. And so that's part of the process. Um, so you need to build that fully compliant email. You have to have a fallback text in HTML. Um, like I said, that's still a requirement. You're sending a full package email. You have to have an AMP compatible sending platform. Um, so again, you have like there's that that list of partners on the, on the last side, but you have to be working with one of those platforms. Um, and then you actually go through the verification process. You'll send test emails, and um, whether you're working with Netcore or Dispatch, we'll help you work through this process. Send out test emails to Google, to Yahoo, and to Mail.ru to get verified. Um, and then it's all profit. Like you're you're good to go. You don't have to get verified multiple times. Once you're verified on your on your domain on your sender address, you're good to go. Um, and so uh, this is uh, a pain can be a painful process but i think that's the reasons why partners like us exist to help you get there um uh, nick we're getting some good questions in which is awesome do we want to answer in real time or do you want yeah let's hit in line are, are there any drawbacks to sending ant payload using a non-listed esp it's really you really can't pull it off right yeah yeah it's it's literally um, um i'm trying to think of a really great example but um unless a unless a platform supports sending it they just they just can't um yeah uh, uh a good a good example would be like if your esp could only send plain text emails um, um and back in the day that was that was a that was a thing some esp supported only plain text and some supported html and so if they only support plain text you can't put html in it's just like it's like a round peg through a square hole it's not going to work um so you have to be working with one of these uh platforms that support it um yep. another great question here and nick um what about hotmail.com? Uh, is that a supported platform today? Um, how does that work? Yeah, no, not not, not supported uh, today. Was supported, uh, the, or Outlook.com did a de test run in the early days, if I'm not mistaken, Matt, but but yeah. burned off support. I would say that, you know, that's kind of up for grabs. I, I'm not sure if Apple ultimately will ever support it. I do think the Microsoft properties are made potentially up for grabs. Um, and and Marsha, uh, is asking here why ha there hasn't been an increase in adoption from mailbox providers, and uh, maybe, maybe that's a good one. Maybe to say for the end, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's a really that's a that's a that's one we can dig into. And I've got a lot of let's dig into that there. one. First, yeah. Marcia, you get first question at the very end here, but but before we do, let's. I just want to highlight why this is so important and, and why we really feel passionately about about. Uh, the the uh, possibilities with uh, interactive email powered by AMP. This conversion funnel likely looks relatively uh, familiar to many of us. It, I'm gonna I'm not gonna say it's everyone's, and I'm not gonna say it's it's the numbers match up because there's high level of variance. I used to be an analyst, high variance, and and but but just basics. We're gonna send messages. They're gonna be delivered. Hopefully, a, a big percentage of them. Some of them are gonna be opened. Some are going to be clicked and, and a small percentage ultimately are going to click through to a landing page or a website experience and they're going to convert within, as we all know, all 100% of us, there is friction in this experience, right? There's sig relatively significant drop off uh, across the board. We try to minimize that uh, as best we can as marketers, but there is friction across. When we implement interactive email powered by AMP, we literally remove a whole piece, a whole element of the of the funnel here. So we're sending, we're delivering, uh, customers are opening. We we can't measure as well anymore with with Apple and everything. But but uh, those who who are adjustable by AMP, we are and converted 
people who take action in the email itself uh, can convert. And, and this drives uh, big lifts in, in data collection, big lifts in, in uh, ultimately uh, core KPIs, engagement and, and uh, revenue. And so across business verticals, and, and that's something that's important to, to talk about too. You know, I think in the beginning, we used to think about AMP as kind of product carousels for, for, for retailers, which, which a lot of people maybe in the old days invested a bunch of money a bunch of resources and kind of developing and didn't really get the juice from the squeeze. Uh, but across verticals today, uh, uh, financial services, big increases in form uh, completes, interactions, customer engagement, uh, feedback, um, and, and preference collection, which is a, a, a great one. Um, again, customer interactions uh, uh, in, in travel hospitality. Travel hospitality is a great one. S searching and, and uh, uh, reserving flights, reserving appointments, that sort of stuff. Um, and retail e-commerce, which, which we'll go deep in. Um, I know uh, we have a bunch of examples here. Um, and, and Matt, I know you have a focus here too. But by implementing AMP for email, we can really drive uh, inbox commerce. Uh, uh, to take that step away from the, the website and not only in, in kind of um, across all stages of the, of the customer life cycle uh, from awareness, basic stuff in the welcome message, like, like capturing user preference uh, to drive incremental personalization uh, right through to featuring better, more products, product discovery, uh, enabling in, in email search which I love, you know, uh, a little unobtrusive search box at the top, which allows people to interact with the product catalog right from the message itself. Uh, gamified offers, I know you have a good example here coming up. Um, product comparison, doing it in the message itself. Uh, wish lists, cart recovery, cart abandonment is, is a game changer uh, when it's, when it's uh, interactive. Uh, live, you have another example in here around live order tracking, we do too. <laughs> Uh, ratings and reviews, a great one. Uh, loyalty programs, rewards, and and cross sell, upsell. It's uh, across the life cycle, across business verticals. We can implement interactive messaging to drive a big, a big uh, impact. I got a question for you here, Nick. Um, I'm a, I'm a I'm a you know, reading between the lines, what you're saying here is like every email you send today, every stage of your customer life cycle. Um, should be and could be an amp experience that's going to increase conversions. I, yeah, I'm a you, believer, but yeah. I know you probably have customers come to you and ask like, um, should I run a new promotion with amp or should I try to like revamp one of my current promotions one of my current campaigns with amp? Like, where do you, where do you sit or where do you, where do you think like net new or revamping something old? What, what's your, what's your entry point for amp? No, it's, it's interesting. I think we, we have kind of a, a maturity model where, where we start, you know, kind of basic initial triggers, depending on, on business verticals and stuff. But, but oftentimes it's, it's the same stuff you're doing. You're trying to drive ratings and reviews. You're trying to drive kind of cross all up. So, but by, by, you know, amplifying it as, as we'll say, uh, you can have a, a big incremental, uh, uh, addition. So, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, maybe that's a, a maybe I'm, I'm, I'm saying both there, but, but yeah, uh, <laughs> it's it's not. We don't need to kind of reinvent. Uh, in many cases, we while this is transformative technology, and we can reinvent our programs. Many of the existing use cases we're trying to achieve can be done more efficiently and just easier. Uh, yeah, through through AMP for email. Awesome. Yeah, I absolutely agree. We can get into it, but I absolutely agree with that. Yep. Yep. Uh, so let's, I'm going to bank through these uh, relatively quickly, but uh, we just mentioned, you know, product carousels, uh, you can get much more interactive and feature much more product in a more engaging way with, with AMP for email. I think this is probably where a lot of people have started uh, back in the day. And, and, you know, it, it is kind of a very cool uh, flashy use case. You can see big impacts. Um, um, I, I like it. There, there's a lot more. Uh, again, 300% surge in engagement from from one of our customers uh, in in uh, India Carrot Lane, featuring just kind of detailed product information in the message itself. Not needing to go further, you know, generating uh, much more engagement and, and interest. 
one I really love, and, and this one, uh, you know, I'm passionate about is just data collection, getting more information about our customers in the message itself without leaving the, the overall experience. Uh, we can do it quickly. We can do it efficiently and generate really, really big lifts in, 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 uh, yeah, core KPI in, in conversions here. And, and I'm going to plug here quickly. Uh, that's me on stage last year, just, uh, th yeah, 2022, just for the holidays, accepting the award, uh, uh, humbly on behalf of, of our client Mintra, uh, Walmart company who generated a big, big lift in, in data collection, just by putting a little, uh, uh, survey in a, a newsletter they were going to send out anyway. So to your point there, Matt, like just, they were going to send out an email. It was featuring Grammy looks. Uh, they added a little bit in the message to gain a little bit of zero party data, uh, got a ton of it and were able to personalize ongoing campaigns. Again, delighted to win best interactive campaign of 22 for media post. Another one that received actually honorable mention was one from another customer of ours, uh, red bus standard email sending out. They wanted more information about their customers, personalized ongoing experiences. You could fill out a quick survey, Again, the normal funnel on the left, the interactive funnel on the right. Big lift uh, in, in conversions. Um, our second poll coming up quickly. The uh, If you'd like a personalized demo, click here, maybe later. Uh, we'll take that and you can keep filling it out while we proceed. Um, in e-commerce specifically, we mentioned it earlier, search in the message itself, the ability to, to kind of interact with the product catalog, no longer a one-way experience, us pushing product to consumers, but actually an a interactive experience where consumers can shop and browse and ultimately coming up very soon in our market, check out uh, cart recovery, uh, order path abandonment, a, a natural uh, uh reducing friction, driving big lift in conversions. You're going to show an example. I know I'm Matt in a minute about delivery tracking, but, and as consumers, we all know, we, we want, you know, two-way communicate. We want to know when our stuff's arriving and, and uh, that can happen now in the inbox itself. Um, again, an app like experience happening within the inbox um, ratings and reviews as, as, retailers and, and e-commerce uh, brands, we always are trying to build our, our, our library of ratings and reviews in you know a low percentage. We try hard and, and we allocate resources to it. Not, you know, so it's got a low conversion rate on, on, on ratings and reviews. It's, it, it's a worthy pursuit. By implementing interactive emails, we can drive those metrics through the roof. A quick star, a quick... Uh, uh, rating a quick review, an NPS score just in the footer of a message uh, can be a game changer. Can be a game changer. Um, yeah. Booking tickets, uh, searches, um, appointment booking searches. Again, to your point earlier, Matt, about just engaging with yeah a API calls and and a virtually anything we can do. On our, on our app or on our site, we can now do in the inbox. And that just transforms, yeah, the, the, the program removes that whole step, removes that friction and, and the lifts can be, yeah, off the charts. I think there's um, something interesting about a couple of these examples here is uh, we have this concept in email marketing I talk about called like reference emails. And th those are emails like an order tracking email or a flight confirmation email that you you know, you go back to you and you open it up again and again and again, because you want to, you know, when I want to find a tracking link from Amazon. I search my inbox for my order confirmation email and I go and I click the tracking link and I go look at Amazon um, with AMP. I open that reference email each time and it's showing me the live status of where my order is at, which is super powerful. But after the order is delivered, the email knows that and it flips from, hey, your, here's your order status to your order is being delivered. Give us a review. How was it? So it's not like these, these, these apps or these, these AMP ideas. It's not like, hey, you do this one or you do this one. You can create a whole experience here, um, which I think is like, that's one of the, the really super use cases of this. Tremendous. Indeed. 
Uh, travel hospitality, quizzes and games. You're going to give us a good one. Uh, hotel bookings, real time. Chat bots is another interesting one. And again, um, you know, so with, you know, chat GPT and everything and or <laughs> real customer support, you know, within an email, if, if you're sending an email around support and then giving someone the ability to engage with you directly within the message, that's just a, a much better customer experience uh yeah that we're enabling um this is probably as a, as a consumer sorry nick this is probably one of my favorite favorite um amp use cases um because um i think every um direct consumer brand should be um enabling chat directly in email because one of the most frustrating experiences of a consumer is you know i order a flight i'm looking at my my you know my ticket information my email and i realize like, i like booked for the wrong day or something and like to have to go back to the carrier's website, try to navigate their support system and find like a chat button, which is all, all I want. Um, you can enable that directly in the email and skip out so many steps there, make it for a much happier customer. And like, you can pop up the chat in the email, right? You can have like a click here to chat. You can have a you know, click here, enter your phone number. Someone will give you a call and we'll like give you the status of that. Like customer support is like so fundamental to, to, to your brand and tell you, you know, whether or not your customers like you, whether they come back, whether or not they evangelize for you. And like, you can have a huge lift there in email. So this is my favorite use case. I love it. I love it. Uh, an another one that's that's a, a good one is gamification. And and we know gamification works. Let's let's <laughs> talk a little bit about, uh, about that. Yeah, okay. Um, man, there's a whole host of examples here um, from, the, from the dispatch team and, um, and some others. Um, like, uh, I think spin the wheel in the top left there is probably one of my favorite experiences. So we can do spin the wheel with like real-time discounts. Um, we can do quizzes, we can do guessing games. Um, I didn't grab a screen cap of it, but my team built out, um, uh, a Pokemon guessing game where like you get an outline of a Pokemon and you got to guess what it is. Um, a lot of these are like turnkey. You can drag and drop in, spin the wheel, connect it to your e-commerce store and start sending these out. But a lot of these can be like really custom. Like you want to do a crazy Easter promotion, we can, you know, you can do that with AMP. Um, and that's like one of the things I like to like really encourage is like, like yes, let's use like let's use off the shelf um, AMP examples today. And like, yes, you should do that again. Like every email you send today could be an AMP experience, and like almost guaranteed you're going to see a, a lift from doing that. But you can also break the mold here and do like really interesting campaigns and really really like crazy campaigns here and leverage gam gamification in, in a, a huge way. Um, I think the next slide as well is like really cool. Um, this is an, uh, an amp, um, app we've developed here at dispatch and, um, lets you pick kind of like guess the word in email. Um, and it's kind of like, um, you get in a certain number of guesses and then, um, uh, if you run out, you lose, but if you guess the word, um, you, uh, you get a discount, you know, in the end of the day, everyone actually wins, but it's really fun. One of the things I want to highlight about this, and you can see a little keyboard there, is um, AMP and this technology allows us to design emails in like a really cool mobile first way. Um, so you can think about on, you know, adding in an on-screen keyboard that people can press. Can press. Um, one of the challenges in email on mobile often is like links being really small and buttons really small. AMP lets you make, you know, make like really big pop-up buttons, make things that are really easy to interact, interact with. Um, and depending on your audience, like that could be a huge thing from an accessibility standpoint. I'm getting long winded here, but like hangman and like email, it. this is like, this is a great promotion perform super well. Um, so just super excited for stuff like this. Um, oh yeah, that's a, another, another like awesome, uh, like e-commerce, uh, win here. And, and this is something cool is like the ability of amp to kind of translate, um, experiences we're used to in person, like, you know, who has never done like scratch and win, um, like in, in person, like even like grocery stores sometimes will give you like a little scratch and win for a discount. We can do this with AMP and this can be entirely dynamic, like to the point of like when someone clicks and, and or scratches one of these squares, you know, we can go and, and generate a result and, and figure out what's going to be in there um, and do this all in real time, um, which is super cool. There's also security here. So you can make sure this is only done once and generates a unique coupon code and everything else. Like, um, this technology, again, AMP came out in 2019. This technology is, is, is kind of mature now. It's kind of baked. Um, and it's like, it's it's powerful and it's ready to go. 
Yep, yep. And we neglected to mention at the beginning, used by Google themselves pretty extensively, right? Like, you know, they're the biggest users, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that and that's, as, as, as a Google user, it's amazing. Um, yeah. Um, this is this is super cool. Um, uh, uh, and I, I think, again, going back to like every email you use um, should leverage AMP. Not every use case of AMP has to be a flashy, you know, scratch, spin the wheel, everything else. You can sure. use AMP just to make your emails like more intuitive to to um, engage with and make them just just more useful. Um, you know, this is about managing email preferences. But let's go to search and email. If you're an e-commerce store, why wouldn't you embed search in every email you send, right? Because you're going to get more people look looking at products. You could do that. Um, managing email preferences. I'm a really big fan of this. Um, we know as marketers, if we give people options to control um, how much email they're going to get from us, if it's not just a black and white unsubscribe, subscribe, but if it's actually like, hey, daily, weekly, monthly, how much do you actually want to hear from us? We know we'll get less people to unsubscribe and we'll get happier customers. Um, and you can embed that whole preference experience in the email itself using AMP. Um, I go back to every email you're sending likely has some kind of unsubscribe um, and it's a bad customer experience. Sometimes when you got to navigate through a bunch of forms on a website, we can make that an awesome experience in email here and, and like make the, give the customer like a lot of power here. And, and I'd advocate for brands to do this. I think you'll see really good results from it. Yeah. And, and no real downside because someone gets a fallback if they, if they don't get the interactive response. Great stuff. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I think we called, we called this out. Um, uh, Netcross, some really amazing examples of this as well. Um, one of the things um, Dispatch does really well is, is we help connect your AMP emails to all the other products and services in your tech stack. Um, so this is an example doing product reviews with Yap, with uh, Yapo in particular. Um, again, you likely send emails today to your customers being like, hey, how are those headphones you just bought? Like, leave a review. Um, and one of the power use cases of, of AMP um, and uh, something like this is, let's some, say someone gives you a five out of five, right? Like, that's awesome. So like, you, yes, you want to take that review and put it, you know, feature on your web page. Um, maybe even want to prompt them to share it on social or, or give them a just a, a coupon code they can share with a friend. On the other hand, if they give you a one out of five. Um, maybe you want customer support to reach out to them. So maybe you flip this instead of saying, hey, thanks for your review. Maybe flip to, are you okay if support reaches out to you? Can we, can we help? And, and that's like, that's so important. Trying to change that one out of five back to a five out of five. That'll help your brand. Um, and that's the power use case of AMP is intelligently engaging with the information that the customer is giving you. 100%. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, I, I, I mean, we talked about live parcel tracking. Um, this is just like, it's, an, it's a, again, y'all send a lot of email today. We send a lot of email. Every email could be an AMP experience and like transformative AMP experience. Parcel tracking is just like a great um, example of this, um, how we do this with dispatch. Totally. Uh, we got one more poll. We're going to list on the side here. And we're just going to come clean here with the value proposition around AMP in North America. I will tell you at, at Necro Cloud, we're sending a ton of AMP enabled. You know, we do have customers sending every email they send is, is AMP enabled email. Many of them in, in Asia seeing huge, huge lifts for those early slides. The, the factor in getting back to that one of those earlier questions of why hasn't email and free email taken off in in this market uh, specifically is is the kind of Apple headwind and 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 the fact of the matter is and we see this and and I welcome your comment here too Matt is is you know in some international markets and for those of us on the line who who are marketing internationally uh, some markets dominated by Android and, and Google we're seeing big addressability for AMP. You know, the vast majority of the audience receiving interactive messages and seeing those big lifts in the core KPIs, you know, at a, at, a, at scale. Um, in North America, there there is a headwind here. And, and I don't want to, yeah, we're, I, we're, we're very mindful of it. You know, not everyone who is going to get an AMP message. And again, you know, if, if you're on an Apple device and you're using the Apple Mail client, you're not going to get it on an Apple device with native Yahoo or native Gmail. You will, but you know, Yahoo Gmail, Gmail specifically, big hunk of the of our audience. Many of you on the line, big hunk of our audience in in North America, 
of those, some will be, you know, uh, engaging on a on through Apple Mail, um, or, yeah, uh, but still a big hunk of that audience available and addressable via uh, uh, AMP for email. For those, you know, that's a we've just looked at those data, ten x in many cases, lift in depending on the KPIs, you know, if it's data collection versus purchasing a car, we're going to have a different, you know, uh, metric there, but just, I'd like everyone to think for a moment who's on the line, if we could, if you could impact that, you know, 30 to 50% of your audience who you can address via AMP for email and drive your metrics by exponentially, you know, what would that do for your business? And, and, you know, for many of our, you know, clients, and and uh, uh, maths, it's a it makes a really really big difference. It's a it's a, yeah. it's a transformative to the channel. Yeah, um, the way the way I think about this a lot, Nick, um, and because uh, I've been in this space for a while, like when AMP first came out, the cost of of of, of leveraging it was really really high. Like again, like the uh, uh, Pinterest taking six months and a ton of engineers, um, and and uh, you know North America in particular, iPhone is, iPhone is king the addressable market for AMP was low for, for many, many centers, many businesses, um, you know, in the last six months, even in the last year, but in the last six months, that cost of implementing has gotten so low, like Netcore has an amazing experience, supports the sending out of the box, dispatch, we've got some easy to use, drag and drop experiences, you partner with Netcore and you can use our, our app, AMP apps with, with Netcore as well. That cost of implementing has gotten so low, even if only 20% of your subscribers or 30% of your subscribers are going to open in Gmail, that right. cost is so low and the results and improvements we're seeing are so high now, the ROI was, is there. Even for small subscriber base, the ROI is there. And, and again, I think it's really important to think about, um, it's not, not, we're not going to spin up a whole new campaign and invest a ton of technology and like make a really big bet on like one email. It's thinking about what are the emails I send today? And if I can get a 10% lift on a really critical email, you know, that ROI, you know, we can prove it today. We can do it. Uh, and it's going to be really easy. It, 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 it's there. Um, let's talk a little bit about how to get started. If anyone is, is hyper psyched to get started right now, you can, you can uh, scan this with your phones. Uh, we'll, we'll also be following up the deck, uh, get some assets right here. But, but Matt, um, I'm going to let you get started. How, how to get started with dispatch. Yeah, thanks. Uh, um, um, these are these are my uh, shameless plug slides <laughs> about dispatch in particular, um, and uh, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll try to say that hey, we make this really easy. Um, so, what does dispatch do? Again, we're a mobile first email builder. We'll help you build emails. Every email you build in email, in every email you build in dispatch um, supports AMP out of the box. It is actually an AMP email as well. You don't even have to think about it with our drag and drop builder, um, and we have a ton of pre-built AMP experiences that you can kind of drag in as modules. Um, and um, dispatch, we don't send uh, emails ourselves. We partner with, and you can pair us with your favorite compatible email sender like Netcore, one of our partners. Um, and we kind of wrap this technology up. We call it, we call it apps for email. Um, we've got free trials on our website. You can sign up and try it today and get it in there. Um, I think the, the link we posted previously, we've got a bunch of like sample AMP emails you can send to yourself and experience, hey, what can dispatch help you do? Um, I, you know, um, one of the, the killer things for dispatch, we are kind of like a premium, um, um, AMP builder, premium email, email builder. We help you when you are ready to scale. Um, so we can fully integrate your AMP um, apps with wherever your data exists, um, whether it's in your, in your CRM or um, in your email sending platform. Um, you can fully customize our, our apps under the hood. Um, and you can actually work with us too to build out completely custom um, app experiences. Um, like, you know, I've shown you things you can do today. Um, those are drag and drop. But if you have some amazing idea, we can help you out. Um, we're also thought leader in the space as well. Um, <laughs> you know, we got the links. Um, some of these are just uh, pulled from our site, but like everything you need to know about AMP, AMP usage for every vertical, AMP uh, myths debunked, um, our AMPed up email series on B2B. Like I am a believer, I'm an evangelist and like, I don't care if you don't buy my product, but please like learn about AMP, learn how you can leverage it. And we got a lot of free resources on how to do that. Yep, and a lot of great stuff there for sure. Um, I'm going to quickly, yeah, hit on the Netcore stuff and then let's get to the Q&A because we got some meaty questions here. Um, Netcore, we've sent 
uh, nearly 2 billion AMP enabled messages for over 50 brands. We uh, have, uh, like Matt, developed a whole bunch of different use cases and templatized them to make it easier for, for brands like yours to use them. And uh, many of our customers across the globe seeing really, really significant uh, uh, lifts as a result of, of interactive emails. One of the things that sets us apart at, at NetCore really in the marketplace overall is that uh, all the email and cross-channel campaigns we're sending for our customers are powered by really granular, uh, powerful product catalog data that's enriched by AI and fuels really deep levels of personalization. Uh, we're combining those uh, 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 catalog data with shopper intent data, turning shoppers into buyers, and increasingly turning shoppers into buyers in channel, uh, in email, uh, WhatsApp, um, and, and beyond. Um, we, we do have a do, do it yourself kind of WYSIWYG editor. Um, we have prepackaged amplets, little, little footers, little headers to, to add to all your messages to, to enable uh, e easy implementation. Um, we enable you to, to convert existing templates into AMP templates. We have uh, uh, consulting and ultimately a, uh, we'll do it on a pay uh, performance basis. We have, we have a team that's, that's dedicated, that's aligned with, with customer KPIs to, to drive growth. We're, we're passionate about the possibilities and, and uh, you know, are, are putting our skin in the game on that front. So um, a lot of great stuff here and a lot of great questions. And so thanks everyone for, for hanging in. Uh, we do have a bunch of questions. I'm going to try to get through. Um, did we answer the one about Hotmail? Yeah, we, we, we answered Hotmail, ultimately Microsoft. What are your thoughts? So mailbox provider adoption, uh, I think uh, you know, Apple's the major headwind. Uh, Microsoft yep. tried it. What, what are your thoughts on just, yeah, the, the pro provider landscape as some of these use cases uh, develop and as the market kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Becomes more yeah, I mean, it's 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 um, I mean, it is uh, one of the top questions about AMP. Um, so we are getting more mailbox providers slowly. Um, there is a there is a chicken and an egg problem here where we want more AMP senders sending great AMP emails and doing amazing things, and then more mailbox providers will jump on board. Um, there is a hard wall though. Um, so like Apple Mail is incredibly unlikely to ever adopt a Google technology. Um. And Microsoft, Microsoft has played it. Um, Microsoft hasn't ruled out uh, adopting AMP again in the future, but Microsoft has been investing heavily in new technologies in Outlook. Um, they've released a whole host of new features in the last year, um, yep. allowing you to do kind of, do kind of some AMP-like stuff, but in more specific use cases. And so um, long-term, where I see the market going actually is Microsoft and Apple and Google all having somewhat um, competing technologies, which... Um, which kind of sucks to be honest, but um, but the benefit is there'll be partners like Netcore and partners like Dispatch, and we'll help you build for all those use cases and, and leverage all those use cases. Um, but again, I want to go back to our, our earlier point about like again the cost of adoption of AMP is getting so low now, and the ROI was there that for your Gmail customer base, um, uh, even if it's you know ten percent, twenty percent of your subscriber list. The ROI is there. You're going to see a return and you're going to have like, just provide those customers with a phenomenal experience. Yep. No doubt. No doubt. And, and that gets to our next point, which, which is, will it work with irrespective of ESP technology? Will it help e-commerce in a broader sense of marketing? So it's not going to work irrespective of ESP technology. You, you hit on it. Uh, uh, we had that list earlier. Certain ESPs support it, certain don't. Um, and so you need to be working with it, with an ESP that, that does, um, you know, uh, or yeah, or using multiple ESPs as many at the enterprise level do. Uh, yeah, some customers may want to just allocate one mail stream to to interactive messages. Um, and in e-commerce, in a more broader sense, ultimately, and this gets to the next point: Can I purchase an item in an iPhone within an AMP email itself? I I will tell you, we are very close to that happening in this market. Uh, we we have a lot of uh, yeah follow up with me directly and I'll send you an example of it. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're very close, Matt. Oh, I mean, I mean, Mike. Yeah. I think um, up until recently um, the, with AMP, what most um, 
uh, providers are, are, are comfortable doing was that if you had a credit card on file, so you already had a customer card on file that you could charge, um, you could do a, a checkout in email and, and as long as you could reference that card on file. And if the right. customer didn't have a card on file, we could um, create the shopping cart. You could add products into it. You could get all the shipping, um, contact teachers, everything else, get, and give them a final price. And the final step would be a click through to a website just to complete payment information. Um, and that was up until very recently. But as Nick's alluding, NetCore has some super cool technology come down the hood that'll do everything. So um, process credit cards in email. Um, I think it's I think it's a thing. That's where we're going. Right there. Uh, how about tracking? Which uh, do we know what elements are being used in templates? What, how how does AMP for email impact kind of yeah our analytics and tracking? Can we can we track it? Yeah, so um, this will kind of depend on um, how you build your AMP email, which provider you use, and what they support. Um, so speaking from the dispatch perspective, uh, so from a technology standpoint first, essentially, um, anytime a user clicks on something in an AMP email, you can know that as an event. Um, that's, the, that's the technical capability. Um, so products like dispatch, what we do is we like we think actually analytics on the AMP email are super, super important. So we make that like a really important component of our experience is giving you and letting you know exactly how many people are clicking where, how they're interacting and, and engaging with the AMP email. Um, uh, and we can also do um, uh, tell opens as well. You do get an open event with AMP. It's guaranteed because the email actually has to, the email knows it's getting opened and it can go out to your store and say, hey, I'm getting open. Like, I need some information. Like, um, I need to know product inventory. I need to know where this order is so I can display the order information. Um, so you actually get really rich tracking with AMP, which is um, a cool benefit given the state of email and, and how we're losing some of that. Right. No, totally. Um, another good one here. What's the mechanism to handle, and Techie too, uh, to handle authorization? Do you have to generate a token uh, when you're sending an AMP message? Yeah, that's a, a really good question. So um, uh, Google doesn't do um, much out of the box around um, kind of authentication. They do a little bit. Um, platforms like NetCore and those, those platforms like Dispatch, one part of the value add that we bring to the table is actually um, putting in some strong controls for um, authorization. Um, so uh, what Dispatch does with uh, the vendors we work with is at send time for each recipient, you're essentially generating like a unique token or unique code that's specific to that person and that email as well. Um, and that lets you validate um, on your side um, uh, that the, any request for email. So if the, if the email gets opened and it's an order tracking email and it, you know, the email wants to know, hey, is, where is this parcel at? You can know, oh, this is, this is Nick um, from Seattle who we just sent this email to and that's who is requesting order status. And you can kind of validate that and, and, and know for sure uh, who's opening it. Um, one of the strongest controls around AMP that Google was really strict about is that you can't forward AMP emails to anyone else. Um, and so it's, yep. um, as long as you, they, basically how we, we talk about security of AMP and, and authentication, you know, as long as you can trust um, the inbox, as long as you trust that if I send an email to, to you know, Nick at NetCore and Nick at NetCore opens that email, and I trust that's Nick, um, that's basically like the level of trust you have to have with your customer. And so if you have that level of trust, you're, you're good to go. Um, and I think that's, um, to, in, in my, from my perspective as a technologist, I'm okay with that. I think that's pretty good. Yep. Totally. Totally. They, uh, can't forward them. They also, ex yeah, they stay live, but they also expire after a period of time. Right. They're, yeah. they're not. Yeah. yeah. And emails have a, have a default expiry window. Um, of I think around 30 days. Um, a value out of a platform like Dispatch is you can expire those emails whenever you want. You can, you can, Indeed. you know, 12 hour exploding email, this deal will, is going to go. Um, you can do that. Right. You update it until it's gone and then it's gone. Um, can, uh, in, uh, question about price, you kind of hit on it earlier. How much more expensive is AMP? It used to be very expensive to send an AMP email because you're generating a lot more incremental code. It's a different workflow. It's a different QA process, right? I mean, it's, it's a, right, as we've hit on earlier, it's a paradigm shift, right? So, so yep. in the earlier days, it was high cost. Now, I hope we've, we've answered that a lot, like, or, you know, hit on that. You can implement AMP relatively cost effectively, you know, uh, it's, it's going out as a, as a, you know, as part of your uh, uh, program is another MIME type. Um, and if it's, if it's templatized, uh, it's, it's not 
much more expensive anymore. Costs come way down. Yeah. And, and like from us, once you build, we're talking, we're talking about the build. Once you build your AMP email and it's ready to go, let's say you put it into your order tracking email, Nick, like there's no additional cost from NetCore to send. No incremental. No, no. One time, right. times. You got a CPM, you're sending messages. Um, yep. A good question here. And, and you hit on security earlier, but how about phishing concerns? Any incremental phishing concerns as a result of, of uh, ample able, able messages? Yeah, that's, that's a really great question too. So um, uh, I won't go into like this, the specific specifics of phishing, but we'll talk about again, like who can send AMP emails and as send as yourselves this is an important thing to understand. Um, you do have to get explicitly white labeled by Google and uh, Yahoo um, and AOL in order to send these emails. And so um, it's not like one of, the, one of the challenges of HTML emails is that people just, everyone started sending HTML email. And so there was ways you could, you could abuse HTML and there was no controls. Um, AMP, you have to, you know, Google has to say, okay, you know what, Nick from Netcore, I like you. Um, I trust you. You can send AMP emails. Um, you need that, that level of, of trust and establish that with them. That means that as a consumer that's going to receive these emails, if I'm receiving an AMP email, um, I'm trusting that Google and Yahoo have, have signed off and say this person's a good sender. Um, and so that, that to me alleviates a lot of the concerns around phishing or people doing malicious things inside the email. There are other considerations that Google has taken to ensure that the inbox can't be abused and you can't do malicious things in the inbox. Um, again, like there's a pre, there's a high degree of security and thought into this. Um, so it's, it's pretty safe. Yeah, indeed. indeed. I mean, in, in Google Docs, many of us, many of that 50% who, who don't know anything about uh, email or AMP for email have engaged with AMP enabled emails in their Google uh, account and uh, yeah, securely, you know, editing documents that are, that are uh, uh, in there. Um, we got two more questions. We're going to fit them in, in this last minute uh, together. Can I use personalization AMP and does AMP support localized emails? Uh, the bottom line is, yeah, AMP is really, yeah, it takes personalization uh, yeah, to the next level and, and uh, gives us the power to, to really uh, localize messages and yet yeah, personalize at a deep, deep level. Um, yeah, no problem with localization or personalization. It's, it's a, uh, yeah, a tremendously powerful tool to accomplish both use cases. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to thank everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you, Matt, for, for uh, joining us today. Really great stuff. I, I sincerely appreciate it. Um, and and um, if anyone looks forward to learning more about uh, AMP for email, I encourage you to, to uh, follow Dispatch and Matt on LinkedIn, uh, download their guide. Uh, obviously, I encourage you to download ours on, on NetCore, uh, follow up with either of us and both of us um, on uh, LinkedIn or email. And um, I, yeah, I, I hope uh, this is lit a fire uh, in, in some of you to learn more and begin to test uh, interactive email powered by AMP. Matt, thank <laughs> you very much. Thanks, Nick. Great to be here. Great as always chatting with you um, and audience. Um, Y'all, thanks for joining from uh, all around the world. Um, hope to chat soon about AMP with some people. Indeed. Thank you. Have a great day.